a serving of, of our pea protein has about 100 calories and most of the calories are from protein. So in a 25 gram serving, for example, you're going to get 20 grams of protein, which is why pea protein is such a great source of plant-based protein is because you have such a high level of protein per serving. Hey guys, welcome to the Digest This Podcast. Today on the show is Jonathan Edwards, and he is the CEO of Newsest USA. And today we are talking all things protein powder, comparing protein powder amino acids, pea versus whey versus uh, other types of protein powders. So you don't want to miss this. Plus, we are also discussing the Prop 65 warning on the Newsest label and why it's there. So you don't want to miss it. If you want a free Vitamix, then listen up. During the entire month of October, I am giving away a brand new Vitamix blender. Now, there are two ways to enter and double your chances. The first is by subscribing to my newsletter by going to my website, lilsipper.com backslash subscribe and just enter your email. Another way to enter is by giving this show a rating and review in whatever podcast app you listen in, then sending me a screenshot of your review on Instagram. And by the way, my Instagram is at Lil Sipper, L-I-L-S-I-P-P-E-R. I'll be choosing one winner from each submission, so you have two chances to win. Good luck. When I was healing from my severe digestive issues, I made a special digestive boost drink every five days and drink it every morning to help my stomach work again. This drink truly helped me and I talk about it in my book, Digest This, but it was a lot of work. I was so ill, I couldn't hold a job and my job was now to get myself well. I know many don't have the option to take off work to heal or perhaps just the time to make this digestive boost every week because it's pretty intensive. So I created my very own digestive enzymes made up of the same digestive enzymes found in the drink I was making. Now, if anyone is experiencing digestive issues or discomfort, it's easy to take these plant-based vegan capsules with a meal to help with optimum digestion. No need to chop, peel, blend, and freeze the different fruits I had to weekly. Now it's all in an easy capsule you can even open and pour over your food if you have difficulty swallowing pills. I know there's a lot of digestive enzymes on the market, So what makes these different than any other on the market is the fact that they only contain the enzymes you want and more of them. So it's super concentrated. No need to include 20 plus different ingredients where you may only be getting a small amount of each. I specifically chose these enzymes and wanted each pill packed with the most they could hold. There's no soy, gluten, gum, or silicon dioxide commonly found in many pills. None of the nasties, only the good stuff. This is a testimony from Pamela N. She wrote, I like the product. I didn't know I needed it before, but I am sure glad I know now it makes things a lot better, less digestion issues, and reduced episodes of constipation. Another testimony from Rachel These are the only things that actually work. I use them daily and I don't go anywhere without them. Definitely recommend 100%. Bethany creates incredible products. Thank you. Every review means so much and hearing it's been helping others truly puts a huge smile on my face. If you want to grab a bottle or two or three, you can go to newsest USA dot com slash digest for a discount. That's N U Z E S T dash USA dot com slash digest. Welcome Jonathan. Hey Bethany. Hey 
Hey. So good to be here. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time and coming on the show. I know we have so much to talk about and there's a lot of different maybe misconceptions about pea protein or protein powder in general. So we're going to cover a bunch of different topics around that. But uh, why don't you first uh, introduce yourself and tell people who you are? Great. Thanks. Hi. Hi, everybody listening. Um, yeah, well, I'm the CEO of the USA branch of a brand called NewZest. And um, I have I started, I launched it here in 2014. And um, NewZest is 10 years old this year. And we're a plant-based nutrition brand out of Australia and New Zealand, which is where my accent's from. My accent's from New Zealand. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much me. I'm just passionate about all things... Um, nutrition and plant-based protein and all of that. And uh, yeah, it's been my privilege to be the, the the head of operations here for the last eight or so years. That's awesome. So before you are, because you're the CEO of NewZest here in, in the USA, but before that, you ran a lot of the stuff that happened in New Zealand, Australia. Yeah, right. well, we well actually New Zealand. Yeah, when we we launched, so New Zealand is a global brand. We're like in a, a bunch of different countries: Australia, New Zealand, the UK, um, uh, Thailand. We're in Singapore, so we're all over the place. And but when we first launched, was in New Zealand. New Zealand, and okay. I was the first ever sales rep for the company. So we launched in June 2012, and I my friend had asked me to join the company because you know they needed someone to sell. The product and I'd sold my skateboard and clothing business, which was my family business. <laughs> so quite no connection between nutrition and skateboards mm. and clothing, apart from skateboarders need to eat and drink too. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, my friend Claire, who used to work for me and my dad in our business, said, Well, why don't you come work for me and my dad, her and her dad, in our business? And I had a year, I was actually waiting to get my green card to come to the USA. And um, I started selling the product out of the back of my car. I drove around all of New Zealand and we put it into hundreds of stores and um, people just loved it. And by the time I was done selling it, it was really a part-time gig to begin with and then became full-time very quickly. And by the time I was done with that, just a few months, I'd fallen so in love with the nutrition space and particularly the New Zest products that I asked the owner of the brand and um, the head of New Zealand globally, Trevor Bolland, who is the founder, um, if I could bring it to the US, and he said yes. And that was really how my New Zealand story began. That's awesome. Now, uh, I could go into you know how you and I met, and I won't bore people, but basically, uh, during the time, for those listening, um, I if you don't know, I was suffering a lot with IBS. And during a really hard time in my life, I could barely eat anything, couldn't keep anything down, couldn't digest it. And Nuzes protein was actually one of the few things that I was able to consume and at least get some nutrients from. And um, I loved it, reached out to the company. At the time, it was a much smaller brand, Nuzest. And I believe you were the one that answered my email. And I think so. Yeah. And then, you know, not only was I like, I love this protein. And then I started to represent it on Instagram and uh, the rest is history. You know, now we have some collab uh, products where I've uh, co-created the digestive line um, specifically for those suffering with IBS. So uh, anyways, let's get into uh, the nutritional profile of pea protein versus other protein powders such as whey, rice, hemp. Um, and what are, what's the nutrition profile, first of all? Yeah, well, I mean, I th the first thing, yeah, so it's, it's got all the nine essential amino acids. Um, you know, the, a serving of, of our pea protein has about 100 calories and of which um, most of the calories are from protein. So in a 25 gram serving, for example, you're going to get 20 grams of protein, which is really high. And why pea protein is such a great source of plant-based protein is because you have such, depending on the isolation process, which we'll get into in a little bit, um, you have such a high level of protein per serving. Um, I mean, I should say really that so many of the different forms of protein you can get are all good. You know, like for example, whey is 
a good source of protein. You know, it's, it's mm-hmm. relatively low in carbs and fat and fiber and sugar, just like pea protein. It, it, it also contains the nine essential amino acids. That's a concern that a lot of people do have is that they think, well, does pea protein have all the nine essential amino acids? Because that's a, a, a common question that I get. And I know people, they want that. And it's, you know, for good reason, people are a little bit more uh, aware that they do need all nine essential amino acids. So I, you, they, it does contain that. To- totally. And I mean, just for any, uh, I'm assuming most of your listeners know this, but the, when we call, what we're talking about, when we're talking about essential amino acids, it, it, there are t- 20, there's some date debate about whether it's 20, 21 or 22 amino acids, but let's just say 20 amino acids and you know, 11 of them the body can produce, but nine of them the body can't. And that's why we call them essential amino acids. You've got to get them from food. <laughs> you have to eat them. You know, everything else the body produces. And this is one of my favorite things, topics, because um, not that I'm an expert on nutrition or amino acids, but there's a lot of misconception out there um, in that most food, first of all, it's, you'd be very hard pressed to find a food, and I'm talking fruits, veggies, any kind of food, that doesn't have protein in it. It's like try and find a food that doesn't have protein in it. It's difficult. And then there's only one form of protein that doesn't have all the nine essential amino acids, which is um, gelatin. So the reality is if you're taking protein, you're getting the nine essentials. That what, what people are mostly worried about is the levels of amino acids. So you know, of those nine essential aminos, are the levels in there of a significant enough amount that you're getting enough of the essentials. So you're going to get essential amino acids if you, doesn't matter what you eat pretty much. But if you're eating something that doesn't have a high enough levels, then you're not getting the, you're not getting that sort of required daily amount. And pea protein has good levels of the nine essential amino acids. And yeah, it's a complete protein because it has all nine essentials. Yeah. Well, I think too, I mean, I would beg to argue, I mean, spinach like i don't think it has all nine essential amino acids right google it absolutely and look i'm not i told you i'm not a nutritionist so i am so ready to be wrong now i'm like now i'm like gonna google it i want everybody to go down that rabbit rabbit hole it's such a cool rabbit hole to go down (laughs) Yeah, well, and I mean, I think it, our bodies need so many different things. So, uh, you know, when you're eating like a veggie or a fruit or a carb, like they all work together, work together uh, symbiotically. So it is important to, you know, obviously, hopefully you're not just eating cauliflower or something, but, you know, so. Um, you got to eat variety, I, right? You do, you need variety, but just comparing, obviously, when people think of protein, they think of animal protein, they think of, you know, milk, they think of protein powder, like the really like hardcore stuff. Um, so comparing whey in particular to pea protein, how does that compare? Well, again, it's like they both, they've both got really solid, um, you know, amino acid profiles and um, they're both good sources of protein. For me, what I like about pea protein versus whey is it's higher in iron. It's got fiber in it. There's no lactose in pea protein. And then the other thing, which is, look, this may be another debatable topic, but it's a sustainability issue as well. Like there's less of an environmental impact, you know, growing one gram of pea protein compared to one gram of animal protein. So it's like 70, some order of magnitude, like 70 times less to produce because peas, it's really sustainable to grow peas. You know, they they stand side by side in a field, <laughs> the pea, you know, plants, and they don't take a lot um, to grow. And it's, so they're super sustainable. And, the, and I don't know about, you know, all the brands, I can't speak on all of the, you know, ways in which peas are farmed across the globe. But I know where we, the way in which we produce them, this our supplier literally take, they get grown in the north of France, really high standards of farming there. And then they're floated, they're harvested and floated on a barge down a river to the place where the, the next step of the processing is made. So this, it's such a cool, you know, journey that they've gone on. Um, and yeah. again, really sustainable. Well, and I know too, this goes for pea protein in different brands and other protein too, whey and rice and hemp and things. You really want to know what the extraction process is because every 
type of protein is extracted differently and it could be a toxic, it, they could, it could be even bleached, it could be um, go through so many different things. And so just comparing a pea protein to another pea protein, it, the extraction process could be entirely different, which is why, you know, I personally know New Zest uh, does a special um, extraction process and processing that other pea proteins don't, uh, or they may do it differently, or even just even before that, even the the growing of the peas is so important. And I personally know there's no um, glyphosate in New Zest products because it's grown in France and that's not even allowed. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. And we still test it. We still test it just to make sure, like, you know, because why better be safe than sorry? And we test for pesticides and herbicides and there's, yeah. There's no heavy metals and there's all no that, yeah. Yeah, um, heavy metals for sure. We can talk about that more too. But yeah. back to the um the extraction process, you're right. There's like a bunch of different ways to isolate or extract protein from plants. Um, just briefly on whey protein, I mean, there's a lot of processing that goes through, you know, milk to turn it into a whey powder, mm-hmm. um, including, you know, boiling it and en- enzymes and you know, drying it and treating it this way and that way to make sure there's no bacteria in it. But then when it comes to plant proteins, there's like a bunch of different ways you can do it. And two of them that use um, solvents or um, in one case, hydrochloric acid. That's, you know, so you want to stay away from those hydrolyzed proteins where they use, um, you know, sodium hydroxide or um, some, you know, other ways of getting it to be... uh, separated from the protein, such as uh, solvents like hexane are used sometimes. And hexane, there shouldn't be any traces left of that chemical (laughs) when you're done, but who wants to take that risk? And, you know, hexane is a significant constituent of gasoline. It's toxic, you know. So I would stay away from any, um, you know, uh, protein brands or powders that are using those kinds of extraction processes. And then there are much cleaner ones like fermentation, which, you know, is, it's good, it's clean. It may not result in the highest levels of protein at the end, which is why we don't use it. And ultra filtration, which is another really good um, process, which again uses water and filtration and centrifugation and all of that to get the protein isolated. But what we use is a water-based process using enzymes. And um, it eliminates almost all the anti-nutrients, which I know you're really you know, big on like things like lectins and phytates, phytates, Mm. you know, is another anti-nutrient which can decrease the absorption of iron and zinc and magnesium and things like that into the body. And our isolation process eliminates all of that. And so the resultant, what you're left with at the end has almost no smell or taste of pea, which is kind of (laughs) nice. Yeah. (laughs) Unless you enjoy, yeah. Unless you like that taste, right? But it's also just free of like all those anti-nutrients and, um, you know, it's just, it's really pure and it's got a really, you know, a smooth taste on the mouth. It's filling, it's, it mixes really well. So you don't need any gums or emulsifiers to help with, you know, thickening. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of our, our process. That's good to know because I know a lot of people do want to know your process versus other processes and um, if... For anyone listening, if they're not sure, call the company and ask. Say, hey, like, you know, what what uh, what process do you use? And if the person doesn't know, if that's okay too, you may just get someone on the phone. But if they're still willing to help you and find out for you, or you know, email you back and say, hey, look, this is what I found, um, then that's great. But if they refuse to tell you, just you know what I mean, flat out, then that's kind of a, a red flag to me, you know? It, oh, it totally is because look, I can tell you being on the sort of the brand company side of it, we're getting questions every day from customers, you know, and there's no way if you're in business that you're not getting these kinds of questions. And if you're getting them and the person at the other end of the customer service doesn't have an answer or doesn't know how to answer that, you're right. Like, I, I don't want to make presumptions, but there's something fishy going on because it's not like they haven't had that question before. They just don't have a way to answer it or they don't want to give you the answer. You know, and that's the thing for us. Like, I love those kinds of questions. So, because if we don't have 
um, you know, it, it, if it's a question we've never been answered asked before, it gives us an opportunity to go get an answer that just fully satisfies people. You know, if it's a question we've never been asked before, um, it, it also could be something that we turn into an article because we know people are interested in that kind of thing. So, you know, it's I think what you just said is super critical. You should be able to get the answers to the questions you have from the companies that you're purchasing yeah. food products off. Yeah, they everyone should be transparent about what what they're providing, you know, and you're ultimately consuming. So can you explain a little bit the yellow versus green peas and why is New Zest yellow? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, look, the, the, they're very, very similar, um, yellow and green peas. They have a similar nutrient profile. Green peas have a little stronger taste, which is something, you know, like one of the things we want it, wanted is to have... Um, Again, we don't want to pretend we're not from peas, but it's like you were saying, or like I was saying before, just before, it's kind of nice if it doesn't have a strong pea flavor. So yellow, yellow peas have a little um, less strong taste. And um, they're also, and have been studies that show they're better for digestion, higher in fiber, better for digestion. So honestly, it's really subtle difference differences between the green and yellow, but we just prefer from the taste profile and from the digestion fiber profile, the, the yellow pea. All right. You may not know this about me, but every morning before I drink my daily coffee, I actually drink electrolytes first. There's two reasons I do this. One, your body is naturally dehydrated from the previous night's sleep and is craving hydration. And two, coffee actually dehydrates you even though it is technically a liquid. So rule of thumb, hydrate before you caffeinate. I personally use Element Electrolytes in my morning routine. It's literally the first thing I drink every single morning. I stick to their raw unflavored version, which contains no sugar, no flavorings, no coloring, and no fillers. It contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of salt, magnesium, and potassium. And their unflavored version has only those three ingredients. Element is by far the cleanest electrolyte drink I've found on the market. And I've been looking for a while. Other electrolyte drink mixes have added sugar, maltodextrin, dextrose, gums, and even added oils. Electrolytes are essential for our body to function. So you want to not only make sure you are getting them in your body, but you are getting the best kind. There's also research to back that when you keep hydrated, there are lower risks of anxiety and depression in individuals. So whether you just finished a workout, sauna session, or just waking up in the morning, Element is formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited for those following a keto, low-carb, vegan, or paleo diet. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single serving packs free with any Element order. To get eight free packs, you must go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash digest to get this offer. Element also has a no questions asked refund policy. So you can try it totally risk free. If you don't like it, they will give you your money back. No questions asked. You have nothing to lose. So go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash digest to get this amazing offer. I'll also leave that link in today's show notes so you can easily scroll down and order with just one easy tap. Now, let's talk about um, heart health, kidney function, uh, because those are some benefits of pea protein. Right, exactly. So, you know, um, the thing about pea protein with heart health. There are some studies show that it can, that have shown, actually you put an article up on your website about this too, right? Like it yeah. lowers, it can help lower b- blood pressure um, it, yeah. with kidney function. There's research that's shown it can help prevent, um, pea protein can help prevent kidney damage. And then of course it's great for building muscle mass. It's been proven over and over again to be really effective at, at supporting building muscle mass. It's high in iron, 
And we've already, as we've already said, it's got good amounts of the essential amino acids. So it's really a killer, you know, that's probably the wrong word, but great, (laughs) you know, choice of protein. Yeah. Well, and going back to digestion, what inspired the owner of New Zest to create this powder? Um, Because it's such a sweet and really touching story. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, going all the way back to the beginning of the brand New Zest was, um, you know, it is it is really touching. Um, Trevor and Monique, uh, the father and daughter um, power team that created the brand. And um, it was, you know, Monique got diagnosed uh, at the age of 22, at, around 2005. She was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And, you know, most people know about multiple sclerosis, but it's a disorder in the immune, the immune system where the immune system eats away at the protective covering of nerve cells in the brain and the optic nerve and the spinal cord. And um, so it results in nerve damage and there's these, then there's scars that, you know, in the body's attempt to repair the damage, um, it results in multiple scars, which is, sclerosis is another word for scars. So that's why it's called multiple sclerosis. And, you know, the prognosis when you get diagnosed with this is not that good at least back in 2005 it particularly wasn't you know things have come a long way but um and the symptoms are really impactful for people it can impact your speech your vision so many got diagnosed with it and trevor um as a you know a loving passionate father and was just not satisfied with the pro- prognosis that they were given you know the the the, the future that they were going to have to have. And so they stopped, you know, stopped the action, went around the world, you know, spent months and years like looking at all of the, in different places, looking at, you know, speaking to experts, different kinds of treatments. And, you know, it really um, kind of all led back to nutrition. And because the more you dive into health and you found this, obviously, I mean, it's such a big part of your story. The more you dive into health, you're constantly led back to nutrition as one of the most essential parts of maintaining good health. And so that was really what, what began News Desk was they both kind of like, yeah, there's this treatment, there's this, medica- there's this medicine and all of that's great. But if you want to give yourself the best shot at coping with a condition of like multiple sclerosis or anything in life, you've got to deal with your nutrition. And that was the beginning of News Desk coming up with the best quality possible nutrition products available. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah, it's just so sweet, so touching. So I just had to have you share that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the very popular question that I always get asked and that is the prop 65 warning on the New Zest tub. So why is that on there? Yeah, great question. And um you know, a uh, little bit of history, the prop 65, proposition 65 it is officially known as the Safe Drinking Water and Toxic Enforcement Act of 1986, came into force in California. So it's a Californian-based piece of legislation in 1986 when it kind of came about. And it, the act intended to safeguard the safety of the state's drinking water from contamination, you know, with chemicals known to cause cancer, birth defects, et cetera. So that was the original intent. Now, what you're obligated to do under that piece of legislation is this, if there's any trace element of heavy metals and in your, you know, product that you sell, uh, and it could be, there's a bunch of different chemicals, but um, that the, the act covers, but in our case, what's relevant is trace amounts of heavy, heavy metals, which is pretty much in anything you pull out of the ground, there's going to be trace amounts of heavy metals. And in fact, some heavy metals you actually need to have in minute forms for good health. But, um, you know, we put the warning on because even though, and we test all the time, very regularly for heavy metals in our products. And even though most of the time um, we test under the minimum amount where you're required to put a warning on, we just opted to be like, we wanted to be proactive with regard to it because the legislation is very clear. If you have less, if you have more than half a microgram and a microgram is like, um, there's a million micrograms in a gram. That's how small that is. <laughs> mm-hmm. So less than half a microgram of lead, for example, you have to, you know, if it's more than half a microgram, you have to put this warning on. Now, here's the thing. 
you know, we, in my view, if you're selling any kind of plant-based protein, you should probably have this warning on because every, every, um, you know, the crop is different. You're pulling it out of the ground. Heavy metals are in almost every, anything you put out of the ground, broccoli, whatever you eat, you know, on the average plate, it's going to have some level of heavy metals in it. And there was a, a, a YouTuber and a podcaster called Dr. Gonzalez, who's a really cool guy. And he did a, a review of like 80 different proteins, 80 different um, plant-based proteins. And our one came out number one for being the most transparent, for having the best test results out of all of them. Yeah, I remember that episode. Yeah, Heal Thyself. It's great, yeah. The thing about Prop 65, is, as I was saying, I think most most companies, and I don't want to, again, I don't want to be presumptuous here, but look, I know for a fact that other companies, if you, if you pull them off the shelves, there's probably going to be some level of heavy metals in there. And you just got to be... You know, if you're if you're complying with Californian legislation, you've got to have this warning on. If you think that there's any chance that you know there are that there's any even a possibility of being higher than the 0.5, for example, with taking lead as an example. So, you know, um, that's why we have it on. It's really just to be compliant. And that the the what you should know about health, the Californian legislation is it's way um, lower amounts than almost anywhere else in the world says is safe. So yeah. even lower, like 10 times or 20 times lower than the FDA, I think. So well, um, it's interesting because it's just for California too. If right, we didn't, exactly. Yeah, if we didn't sell in New, in uh, California and sold to all the other states, we wouldn't have to put this, this uh, the label on. Exactly. And if you're yeah. in California, I mean, you go into, you go into like your coffee shop and you'll see Prop 65 warnings. It's like, it's all over the place this morning. Yeah, California just for California. <laughs> exactly. When you live in California, you pretty start. You probably you, you pretty much start like not even noticing it because it's so ubiquitous. Yeah. So that's unfortunate because I I do know like a sweet potato can have more heavy metals than a protein powder. You know because it's just from the ground and just different things like that. So, but of course you don't have to label a sweet potato. You know. So it's I I feel like it's a little bit uh, politics when it comes down to it, unfortunately. And so that is the reason why. But yeah, you guys do an amazing job and you are like number one with, you know, all the testing and the results are just way below even the the limit. So for anyone wondering or listening, that is why. That's the the long answer, really. Um, But I have more on on my blog and website if you want to refer back to that. You can probably type in uh, Prop 65. I have a search bar on my blog, littlesipper.com, and then um, I have referenced that. So yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the digestive support protein and the ingredients, why I chose the ones that are in there because even though there are min- minimal ingredients, uh, let's just kind of break each one down. So bacillus coagulants. Yes. And I should really play the role of the interviewer here and ask you, but I'll tell you my answer. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> we should we could switch we could switch over, but yeah. I mean, bacillus, bacillus coagulants, I mean, you're the one, everybody listening, Bethany is so, you know, as you know, so... Um, has integrity with what she recommends and puts in her own body and should never recommend anything else that she is not like fully stands behind. And bacillus coagulans is the probiotic we use and it's very resilient. It's able to withstand heat. It's great shelf stable, which means when you get it into your, you know, when you take it, um, it, it with the protein, you know, you're getting the active live, um, bacteria the way you want it to be when it get, when it kind of comes in contact with the body. So it's optimal, for fortification and taking, you know, with food and taking with as a with a protein supplement. Yeah, and it is studies show, and I've definitely done my research on this that Bacillus coagulans is one of the top probiotics to help with yeast overgrowth and candida. So if you're suffering from that, that's been a specific probiotic to help with that. And it's also like you had mentioned, it's shelf stable. So you know, you have to think about, okay, if I'm taking a refrigerated probiotic and it needs to be refrigerated, then what what happens when it enters my 98.6 temperature body? You know, it's is it going to die? So why does it need to be refrigerated if it can't even withstand the shelf life 
or, you know, in the stores. Yeah, like the know? ambient temperature in a store. Yeah, and the, even the store is kind of chilly. But if it can't, you know, withstand that, then how is it going to withstand your your body uh, when you ingest it? So these particular probiotics, bacillus coagulans, can withstand our body and survive uh, when it goes down into our digestive tract, as well as even a little bit like hotter, you know, um, heat sources. So it's very, very strong. And so that is definitely um, a benefit of that. So uh, L-glutamine, speaking of amino acids. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's exactly as you said, it's an amino acid. And, you know, I think it's, I mean, it's it helps heal tissue in the body. It's one of the, you know, its functions. And um, for the gut, lining for the for the digestional tract it's um one of the essential nutrients for a healthy digestive tract because of its ability to maintain the integrity of the intestinal wall so i mean i think that's why you picked it right you're like yeah we're going to have this in there oh it's totally and it helps rebuild like you help does rebuild the gut lining it's been shown to even help with um leaky gut you know when you your your gut is compromised. The walls, your intestinal walls are are compromised. You don't want uh, the good stuff coming out, and you don't want the bad stuff coming in. So it really helps build that barrier. And so um, again, you can guys can do like research on this, but yeah, it's um, it's great. And then of course the other stuff. There's there's no natural flavors. We use you know vanilla, organic vanilla bean, and cacao uh, for the cacao flavor. So. That is just one example. Now, again, transparency. So let's go to the food industry for a second because there is a little bit of untransparency in the food <laughs> Lack industry. of transparency. Lack exactly. of transparency. Yes. Is untransparency, is that a word? I don't know, but it, if it's not, it should be. I don't know. But yeah, so is the food industry lying to us? I mean, I you, you, have, to, you have to say yes the more you get into it. Not overall. Not every single brand. You've, that's why I love, you know, um, how much online with you know has has brought a lot of forced brands into being more transparent. Um, you know, I've discovered over the years. I'm not, a, as I said, I'm I'm not an expert on nutrition. I'm a student of nutrition. Uh, you know, I love learning about it. And one of the biggest things I've discovered over the years is how much profit incentive is what drives everything in the world in a lot of cases, but particularly the food in the food industry controls what information brands, you know, in some cases the government will disseminate. And so I don't believe it's like a smoke filled room with evil dudes necessarily, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, people, but people's along the food chain, excuse the pun of, of the food industry, their livelihood, their jobs at stake and the viability of their product you know, their brand is at stake. And so that all plays into, factors into what information goes out there and what doesn't. So you've got to do your own research in my view. And it's not hard to see that much of the confusion we have lies in the places where someone's profit has been threatened. And so just like in the tobacco industry, where an industry executive was famously quoted as saying, doubt is our product, you know, what they were the tobacco industry was famous for manufacturing was doubt. Um, some of the doubt, confusion, and misunderstanding in like today is a result of the fact that it's to someone's advantage that there is doubt, confusion, and misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's why it's always good to see if there are studies, you know, who paid for the study. Um, you know, if there's information being put out, you know, don't be afraid to question it. And, you know, brands like us should be held to account. Um, we should all be held to account for, for you know, what we say and don't say. Okay. Now, last question here. Um, now, can we just talk a little bit and, and divert probiotics? We did talk about probiotics. Probiotics versus enzymes though. Those are different. And I feel like some people may get be a little bit confused of what they are and that why you need both. So what are Enzymes. Oh, well, enzymes really said really simply are uh, just proteins that help speed up the metabolism and they help break down the food. And they're a catalyst that supports the body's natural, you know, if you're taking an enzyme, I mean, the body produces enzymes. So, yeah. you know, the, the body doesn't, you don't need to take something. You, you obviously have been breaking down food your whole entire life. Saliva is actually, yeah. Right. So there are, you know, taking a digestive enzyme is like helping the body along with that. And, you know, if you've got gut issues, if you've got digestive, you know, intest- you know, got um, digestive 
problems or you just want more support in that, um, IBS sufferers, et cetera, like taking a digestive enzyme may help. And so, for example, that, you know, there's enzymes that specifically break down carbs like amylase and, you know, which is an, the digestive enzyme that we do and, and actidin, actinidin from the kiwi plant, kiwi fruit, um, it, it breaks down protein along with protease and papine. Um, so the, the different enzymes have formed different functions, but fun, fundamentally they're about breaking down, breaking down the food, helping it digest, yeah? Right. And if you are suffering from any kind of like gut issues or digestive issues, you may be lacking the digestive enzymes and you may need a little extra during that healing process. Or if you just have a heavy meal and you need a little extra boost, the digestive enzymes can be helpful. Um, and so we also have those that we created too, um, which is great. And it does have the, the enzymes like from the kiwi and from the papaya and things like that. And so that's, that's just been amazing. And I still personally take those by the way. And sometimes I don't even like swallow them. Sometimes I will break them open cause they're in a capsule and I'll sprinkle it on my food. And, um, that's actually even more beneficial. So it's not going to degrade the enzymes or make them less effective. So if you do have them, that's a tip there. You can break them open, just mix it in your food. Think, think of the capsules like little mini storage units that can be like pulled apart and sprinkled. <laughs> little storage units. I love it. <laughs> Keep a few in your pocket, you know? That's right. Exactly. Well, you know, a pocket could be dangerous, but, but anyway, maybe in a little plastic, a little bag of some kind. I don't know. All right. Well, we'll have to figure it out. Maybe that could be the next like news S, well, a carrier for all the all your essentials. <laughs> That's right. A biodegradable, you know, planet healthy carrier that helps you carry your little food, mini food, digestive <laughs> enzyme capsules. And I think we're I, going down quite the rabbit hole now. We are. I don't know. But I mean, I feel like, you know, sometimes you just have to, to feel, like say what you're thinking, you know? So anyways, but uh, yeah. So if anyone is a little bit confused or wants more information, I can include a few links in the show notes. Uh, some references and things like that. But thank you so much, Jonathan, for coming on and thank you for your time today. Well, thanks so much for having me, Bethany. It's just, I love your podcast. And of course, you and I are friends and we've known each other now for years. And I just love everything you do. So it's just been super cool to be able to be part of your journey and now a guest on your cool podcast. There's a, a few surprises in the works. So stay tuned for some, Ooh. I got to keep you hanging, but yeah, there's a few things in the works. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digest This. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review in your podcast app to let us know. If you're ever wondering how you can support me and this podcast, sharing it with your friends and family is the best way. This is a resonant media production produced by Drake Peterson and edited by Chris McCone. To email the show, message us at digestthispod at gmail.com. See you next time. The content of this show is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not a substitute for individual medical and mental health advice and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. As always, talk to your doctor or health team first.